Alrighty everyone, well game number three in this best of seven series that was played at the IEM in Katowice and was the grand final of that tournament. And I'm extremely excited to see what happens here in game number three. Spawning here in the bottom right hand corner of Kairos Junction LE playing with the blue Zerg pieces. He's currently down, but certainly not out of it just yet. I'm talking about Sue. In his opponent, spawning in the cross position, playing with the red Protoss pieces. He's currently up in the series and wants to keep it rolling in his favor. His name is Stats. So, guys and girls, this series has been one that has been very exciting. And I, I gotta say, so far, there has been no denying that Stats has been the better player, at least in these first couple of games, simply because his amazing defense has translated to great offense as well. And so, you know, in this matchup, that's really what I what I tell when when people are interested in, in getting into StarCraft 2. A lot of times I will say that the, the, the PvZ matchup is one that is... It really comes down to that defense and how well you are able to defend. And then, of course, that defense generally translates to good offense if your defense is really on point. And that has been true here as in these first, you know, couple of games where Sue in game number two decided to go ahead and push across the map. And I, I really like the idea of pushing across, across the map, trying to dictate the pace of the game instead of allowing stats to do that. And... What I gotta say is that Stats just played incredible defense, holding on, um, and a little bit of an overextension, so there was a little bit of an overextension there by Sue, and then, of course, Stats decided to, to rally and counterattack, and so his incredible defense translated to great offense on the opposite side with some great micro, and, you know, there's just so much that goes into this matchup. When we talk about the real-time strategy game of our time, you talk about StarCraft II, because uh, the amount of mind games that go into this matchup and then, the, of course, the amount of just j just kind of figuring out what your opponent's doing and how you react to that, uh, similar to a chess match. So I'm really excited to see how, you know, the narrative around Sue, who has just never won a major tournament, but always, not always, but a lot of times makes it to these tournaments and just has never won, can never finish it. What does he do now that he's down two games to nothing against Stats? We're about to find out because it looks like Stats, or I should say Sue, is going for that hatch gas pool opener and then he's going for that quick third hatchery once again. Basically the exact same build that he has done in the first couple of games. Uh, whereas on the opposite side of the map, relatively uh, standard as well on, on Stats' side of the map. Going for that gateway into the natural nexus and then the cybernetics core and then we're seeing the twilight council which is followed by a robotics facility as well so we're starting to kind of see early on uh the tech of choice by stats and and sue it does look like uh, sue is going to be kind of doing uh you know kind of doing sue like things he's going to be going for that metabolic boost upgrade so he's you know not taking really any kinds of unnecessary risk early on in the game it does look like we're going to be getting a dark a dark shrine i like that decision a lot to get the dark shrine once again uh, i think that's going to be a, a, a nice a nice build order for stats but stats and sue are the two type they're two types of players that you know they don't take a lot of unnecessary risks now, as far as like timing attacks go, they both, of course, will do that, um, you know, very re you know, regularly. But I gotta say, these guys are—it's a—it's a perfect matchup. It's a great matchup between these two players because they're so even, almost in skill set with their particular races. But should be really interesting to say the least, as we have Sue going for that lair, or he's morphing his hatchery into a lair to get those higher tier lair-based units, and of course. He's going to be also going for the Roach one. So pretty similar build order from the first couple of games for Sue. I think Sue felt like he was on the cusp in game number two, especially of you know getting a you know getting on the scoreboard against Stats, and it just uh, so so happened to to just not work out for him in that game. And I think Sue. You know, the question is, is he going to learn from that mistake of the overextension? Because it felt like he really had a lot of momentum in game number two. 
and we're about to find out because here we go it does look like the dark temple have moved across the map here with of course that war prism and they're gonna try to cause a little bit of some havoc to this third hatchery of sue and it does look like there there is not going to be anything here to detect that these thai templar are around now they're about to come in almost sniped one of those queens so really nice play there by stats kind of throwing sue off a little bit once again and this is what i'm talking about when we talk about the mind games that come into this matchup it is absolutely uh, just out of this world, really, when when you think about it. All the different mind games. Because these players, of course, have seen each other's, you know, VODs. They watch each other's replays. They see exactly what these players do. And they play against each other or practice against them quite regularly. So, you know, it, it just, there's so many mind games that come into it. Now, we are going to see a Hydralis Den coming in for Sue. We're also uh, going to be seeing an Evolution Chamber. So, he's gonna probably going to get ahead and get those upgrades started here sh shortly. The same can be said, though, for Stats, who's getting that forge in so the forge uh, of course probably going to get those uh, plus one plus one ground based unit upgrades here shortly so it looks like these archons are going to be up in the main base location they're going to try to snipe that queen oh just barely getting that queen that queen does escape for another day to to serve the swarm but I, you know I, I gotta say i love how stats has been playing this he's just been putting on that aggression and he's really not letting up He's really trying to keep the creep spread creep spread at bay, whereas, you know, Sue really just can't get that creep spread moving. He just can't get it going simply because of these war prisms that are just moving all over all over the place with those with those, you know, archons. And the archons are, are, are doing the damage uh, necessary. So, and while this is all happening, Stats is on the opposite side of the map. He's going ahead and he's kind of starting to create a, you know, a bigger and bigger force of the same units that he's been using. So, when I say that, I say, you know, sentries as well as immortals. Getting a couple of stalkers here and there. And then, of course, the Archons. I mean, just a, it's, it's a really good unit composition that is working against Sue. And so, you, you, you want to use the things that seem to be working, especially when you are Stats. And you, you see that the same kind of build order is going to be coming in, or you're scouting that similar build order by Sue. You kind of want to kind of stick with what's been working and why you're, you're up two games in the first place. Ground weapons level one is going to be finishing up in less than five seconds for stats. And it does look like another wave of units is moving across the map here. And this is what I'm talking about. Stats, possibly, potentially, the best player, uh, best Protoss player on the planet currently is wants to keep on the consistent aggression against Sue. And this is definitely something that I, I, I agree with 100%. He is trying to dictate the pace of the game. The question is, is there going to be a little bit too much Zerg here? Because there's a lot of Zerg units at this point. Missile attacks level 1 is going to be finished up in, the, in a couple of seconds. And when that upgrade finishes for Sue, it's going to be nice. It's going to be a very nice upgrade for him to have. The same can be said, though, as Storm is being researched at this point as well. Here we go. It's all going to come down to the positioning. It looks like Sue wants to go ahead and get the surround on this army once again. Kind of pin this army in a corner. And it does look like there might be just enough Zerg here at this point. But, oh, beautiful force fields are going to be there. And here come the Biles on top of those force fields. And it looks like Muscular Arguments is going to be finishing up. And all these units, there is a lot of Zerg here. But those force fields are kind of holding this, this unit composition back. The question is, is this is this this army going to be able to get away? Because it does look like Sue is trying to get the surround, especially on those immortals. He wants to pick off as many of those immortals as possible, and he's continuing the pressure. I like this a lot out of Sue. He's going to continue that pressure, and there might not have been, there wasn't really a an overextension there by stats. It was more just a strength in numbers by Sue. Psionic Storm is going to be finishing up in less than 10 seconds, but I've not seen any High Templars out as of yet. Here we go. Sue is at the front doorstep, or I should say the front doorstep of the third uh, the third Nexus. Here we go. Those force fields are continuing, but the army is already pushed past them, and it looks like so many of these units is going down. Stats' supply is plummeting, and all of these units by Sue. Can Sue get on the scoreboard right now, which would be an absolutely huge ordeal. He does not want to go down three games to nothing in this best of seven series that the I am in kind of beats up. A massive, massive ordeal. He's doing so much damage right now. Beautiful play here by Sue. Can he close it out? He is doing so much damage. GG is called. And Sue gets on the scoreboard. I hope you guys did enjoy this game. 
between Sue and Stats. And if you guys did, leave a thumbs up, subscribe for new, stay positive. And as always, I'll see you guys all in game number four.